<laughs> Nikki Chapman, thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you. And that new series, Wanted Down Under, is on BBC One every weekday from Monday at 9.15. If you've eaten too much over Christmas, it's probably a fair bet that you've thrown quite a lot of it away as well. Dumping edible waste in landfill sites is said to be bad for the environment. But what else can you do with all that uneaten nosh? Yes, breakfast Sophie Van Bruggen is in Northamptonshire this morning to explain how mountains of rotting sprouts and leftover turkey, mm, lovely, uh, can be put to good use. Sophie, morning. Good morning. Uh, Brussels sprout to anybody? No joking aside, have you ever wondered what happens to all of that food that you bought but didn't eat over Christmas? Well, it usually ends up in landfill sites, as you've been saying, and creates greenhouse gases. But companies like this one have been using a technique called anaerobic digestion, which converts all of this into energy and electricity, which can be used in your home. We've gone behind the scenes to find out a little bit about how that works. Another lorry load of food waste being dropped off. It's come from households, food sellers and producers in the area. And the plant is fuller than normal at this time of year. Every month, a thousand tonnes comes from supermarkets alone. That's enough to fill over 140 double-decker buses. Believe it or not, all of this rubbish here can go towards helping to power your house. It's collected here, there's about 45,000 tonnes brought here every single year. It goes into the equivalent of a big cooking vat and it sits there for about a month to produce the right amount of methane gas. Any leftover liquid is then used as fertiliser for the local farms. The gas that has formed is then piped out of the tanks and sent to a combustion engine, where it's then burned and converted into energy. The government is under pressure to source 15% of energy supplies from renewable sources by 2020. And at the moment, there are only nine plants like this in the UK. But they're not cheap. They cost around £10 million to build. So there are concerns that DEFRA's budget cuts will mean it's going to be difficult to create any more. However, planning permission has been granted to build another 35 plants like this one and a government review on waste is currently underway, with the findings due to be announced in spring next year. Now, just to give you an idea, this is just a day and a half's worth of rubbish. We've had a couple of lorry loads dropping off some of the food waste already. They say about 80% of this rubbish is extra food waste for this time of year. Richard Barker is the head of the company. Just tell me a little bit about, obviously, how economically viable this is. It's expensive to create these plants and they're expensive to run. Do you think there's a real future? Do you think we'll see more of them? Yeah, I think, I mean, the two things that drive the economics of this business are landfill, taxes and alternatives. So if you're going to put stuff into a hole in the ground, you've got to pay to do that. And uh, we can take uh, a lot of waste at the same price or even more cheaply. Uh, the other thing is we produce electricity and, of course, we sell electricity. And uh, electricity prices, I'm sure as a lot of people know, uh, are going up. And so and I think our view is that electricity prices are going to be relatively expensive. So as long as those two bits, the amount we get paid for food waste, uh, to take it in and the amount that we get paid for the electricity we generate uh, are there, then uh, there's a good, uh, a good return in this business. Now, but what about for people, you know, obviously we're already having to separate a lot of our recycle. A lot of people have been saying to me, I don't want to have to separate my food waste as well. And of course, you're relying on local councils being able to pick them up. And obviously with cuts going on, this isn't really viable for the future, is it? Um, well, I think... You know, certainly from the residents that we've been dealing with in various ca uh, councils around the country, uh, a lot of them are very enthusiastic about this. As soon as they know that they can create uh, renewable electricity, uh, it's something they want to participate in. And from the local authorities we deal with, they see economic benefits from doing this. As long as they can get the front-end collection right and efficient, then the service we can provide is uh, often uh, more cost-effective than the alternatives that are available to them. Lovely, Richard. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. Well, just to let you know, the government are discussing how we're dealing with waste in this country at the moment, and a decision is likely to be made in the spring as to whether or not we'll see more plants like this one creating energy out of food waste. But for now, it's back to you in the studio. Thank you very much. See you later. Now